hands of Ryan Edmondson. Josh Nisbet, he's one of only three outfield players to have played every single minute of football in the A-League this season. And this afternoon, he makes his 100th start in the competition, looking to add to his eight assists. So far this campaign, he leads the league in that department as well. Well, for the visitors, Giancarlo Italiano has also made three changes with Alex Rufa sent off against Brisbane. He's suspended. It's a big reshuffle as Mo Alte and David Ball also make way. It looks like a 4 5 1 lineup. Left back, Lucas Kelly Heald returns, as does midfielder Ben Old to the starting 11. And there's a first ever A League start with his fourth appearance of the season for 19 year old Matt Sheridan. 34-year-old Kiwi international Costa Barbarousas, 91 career goals. One this afternoon, it would be his first against the Mariners for Wellington Phoenix in this, his first spell, third spell with the Kiwi club, mind you. A goal and he will equal Shane Smeltz as the highest scoring New Zealander in the history of the A-League two. And he will move outright fourth in the goal scoring standings. Mark Jackson, his inaugural A-League campaign after that rocky start has been a successful one in the continent as well. He has that in common with Giancarlo Italiano, both A-League debutante coaches. And Ufuk Tale's former assistant is doing a sterling job at the helm. Alex King is our referee, his 134th match, and he took charge of the scoreless draw between these two sides earlier this season. We also just saw the uh, new haircut of Angel Torres, the Colombian forward. He celebrates his 24th birthday today. As the countdown is on, the Mariners are ready. The Phoenix not quite. Nobody was quite ready for the countdown there. Now we are all set for a start. Well, it's more than just another game, a top of the table clash, a win and three points that could decide who goes on to take the Premier's plate in this 23-24 campaign. Daniel McBreen, a former winner of this competition with the Central Coast Mariners, you used to enjoy playing against Wellington Phoenix, but that's a decade ago. Since then, this hasn't always been a happy hunting ground for the Mariners against the Knicks. No, it hasn't, Robbie. And welcome to everyone. What a match this is. And I know Wellington Phoenix have played finals football before, but I think this is one up there with one of the most important matches in the club's history. If they win today, they've got one hand on that Premier's plate, and that'll be the first silverware the club would pick up in the A-League era. So a monumental match. The Mariners, if they can get the win, they draw level, go ahead on the wins as it is this year. So it's a huge match for both teams. And huge matchups all over the park as well between two New Zealand internationals there with Storm Roo up against Ben Old Storm Roo, 11 caps with the New Zealand national. South Africa moved to New Zealand and then to Australia as always said he felt more New Zealand than anything else as his homeland it's why he chose to play for the All Whites I mentioned that Josh Nisbet has played every single minute of the season so far one of three outfield players the other two are just in front of him Scott Wooden and Finn Sermon as here is Alu Kualt putting his body about. Now Torres, the Colombian, still going with the haircut to celebrate the 24th birthday. I'm sure he'd like a goal to help him as well as there's a foul there from Ben Old on Mikael Docker. Ben Old doesn't agree. Well, physical start from both teams. The old Torres as you mentioned with the new hair looking to get forward early and create something for the Mariners but as they've done so often this year Wellington Phoenix snuffed it out there he 
is quite the impact he's had on the Mariners' campaign this season, Angel Torres, but it's Max Ballard who takes this free kick, and the header was from Alu Kuo at the near post. Well, he looks a little disappointed with himself. Seemed to find a bit of space in between defenders here. You see, he just makes that run and just mistimes it, more or less comes off his shoulder. Decent delivery, good run to that near post area, looking to guide it across the face of goal, but just miscuing the header. He's been called up to the Oli Roo squad for the under-23 Asian Cup, along with his teammate Jacob Farrell, the left back wearing the number 18 for the Mariners. The Oli Roos will be looking to qualify for the Paris Olympics. The Oli Whites, their New Zealand counterparts, are already there, and there's a fair spattering of Oli Whites as that's given away very cheaply by Lucas Kelly Heald. It goes back to Nisbet. Brilliant stop. Desperate save from Finn Sermon and Alex Paulson, and they survive. Well, what a save that was from Paulson. Spread. The arms wide, got the left paw on it. He has been immense, it was a turnover. And I thought Nisbet had made the pass a little too early and was fortuitous to get it back, but look at that spread from Paulson. Big, strong wingspan there. Looking at a clean sheet. The heavy pressure early from the Mariners. Now that's nicely done by Sam Sutton down the left hand side as the Phoenix look to try and create the first danger at Danny Vukovic's goal. First touch for Sheridan. His cross is a good one to the back post. Ben Old trying to climb over Storm Roo. But only get a glancing touch to it. Well, Alex Paulson leads the league in save percentage just ahead of Danny Vukovic. Danny Vukovic who leads the league in clean sheets with 10 against Poulsen's nine. They're not only the two outstanding sides in the competition, these uh, matchups are all over the park. And perhaps the only thing these two sides lack is a player currently in the hunt for the golden boot. Mind you, Angel Torres got his 12th of the season on Tuesday night against Melbourne City and Costa Barbarousas has also been in fantastic scoring form. He has 11 so far this campaign, so they're not too far out. Here's Dan Hall with Ballard, who ended his scoring drought with the Central Coast Mariners. This is Farrell looking back for Torres. It wasn't a bad idea. Well, I think he's a good inclusion back for the Mariners today. He gives them so much energy going forward down that left-hand side. I think they've missed him while he's been out. And he did change formations while he was out. They tried to back five or three, however you look at it. But as soon as he's back in there, they've gone back to their customary back four. And it's already showing his propensity to get forward. Injured in the 3-0 win over MacArthur just before the international break. He didn't travel with the team to India for their interzonal AFC Cup final against Odisha. Semi-final, rather. They now take on... Yes, we'll just stay with the action here. Bojidar Krajev, has he been fouled on the edge of the box? He has by Dan Hall. So we've seen one potentially dangerous free kick for the Mariners. Now we've got one up the other end for Wellington. Well, he's such a good outlet, isn't he, for Wellington Phoenix. Ozadar Krajev, seen it do him on countless occasions where he gets forward, uses his strength to protect the ball, and you see 
Just Dan Hall trying to reach in, collects the knee. There are no shortage of takers for this free kick. A little committee meeting. Krajev, who opened the scoring inside two minutes against Brisbane. At the weekend, Sheridan is one, so is Sam Sutton there. A left foot and a right foot option. And it's the youngster, Sheridan, in his first ever A-League start, who was trying to shoot there, by the looks of things. Nodded on from Ben Old and claimed by Vukovic. He looks long early. Bit of a mismatch there between Lucas kelly Heald and Josh Nisbet. Just about, I'd say, the tallest A-League player this season against the shortest. Kaltak now. The Mariners. A really interesting tactical matchup against the Wellington Phoenix. They cancelled each other out when they met back on the 6th of February. There's Docker with Brad Tapp. The Mariners like to hit on the counter-attack. They're happy to be without the ball. And the Phoenix, also a fantastic transition side, but do see a lot more of the ball. Third most passes this season for the Phoenix. Second fewest for the Mariners. Phoenix also the side that have the fewest shots at goal this season. The fewest on target, but they are ruthlessly efficient. They score just as many goals as they need to in general. Here's Kaltak. Looks long. Sam Sutton is there. Two left backs operating back there for the Phoenix today. Sam Sutton and Lucas Kelly Heald. Kelly Heald essentially a third centre back in that five at the back as Storm Rue. Now with Docker looking for Ballard. It's a good little touch around Lucas Kelly Heald. Referee says not enough for the free kick. Barbarousas. That's a clever pass. Inviting Ben Old forward. Krajev is in the middle. Sheridan arriving as well. Dan Hall with the first defensive header, but they come again. Krajev. The Mariners have numbers back, so the Phoenix have lost the element of surprise, but you saw there just how good they are on that transition. Yeah, they've been sensational in that part of the game this year. Barbarousas, Krajev and Old in particular, those three, you saw there. Barbarousas was in a tight area, managed to face forward and find a good pass. It's a good challenge from Brian Kaltak, as you can uh, hear from the sideline. The effects mic. Picking that up, you can see the little star over the crest there. Two championships. You don't get a star for the Premier's plate. They could say it's for that, they've won two of those as well. <laughs> I'm sure the Phoenix will be well, I was hoping. Just about to say, this is a, a big match going towards them potentially picking up some silverware for the first time. And they, as you said, have been ruthlessly efficient this year. They have managed to soak up pressure. Barbarousas has been rejuvenated, hasn't he? And this man in particular as well. And Krajev, he's done brilliantly to get the better of Hall. And I think maybe Dan Hall just did enough to put him off. Well, he just does it time and time again, doesn't he? He, he, he breaks 
gets control of the ball. He uses his strength and his guile. Fantastic technical ability as well. Always seems to be able to find the space to roll a defender. So often he creates things for his teammates as well. You see here, just gets the toe in, strength and the pace to get away. And you see just enough, as you said, from Dan Hall to put him off for the cross. But the outcome of that many times this year has been a pass to a teammate that's invariably punished the opposition. You can see with Krayev trying to stand up alongside Barbarousas. Justin Salas there alongside Pennington and Old and then five at the back. It's like a 5-3-2 formation without the ball. Yeah. Yeah. We had a bit of a chat before when the team sheets came out, didn't we? The, the red herring. Yeah. He said that this didn't look right, but they are very fluid with and without the ball. Wellington Phoenix players are very versatile and rotate through positions as well. As tap, that's a fantastic ball for Storm Root. In behind the cross as well, and there's nobody in there for the Mariners. Halu Qual. Not in a position. That was an inviting ball from Storm Root. Yeah, it was a great run and a good ball as well. His teammates all seem to stand and watch to see how it would unfold. And Storm Root was saying, well, get up there and support. There's another good ball in from Storm Root. Again, just evading Alu Kual in the middle. Will really he get a third chance here against Sam Sutton? That's a good turn. Now, does referee say free kick? Nope, it's out for a throw. Shake of the head from Storm Roo. You can see the fresh stitches there above the left eye. That came against Sydney FC. I'll have to agree with Storm Roo there. I thought Sam Sutton just swiped the left foot. Now Farrell, confronted by Sheridan. He had a pretty confident start to his first ever A-League start. Matt Sheridan at right back. Farrell again. Now confronted by Angel Torres. Referee says, whatever the advantage may be, it's not enough for the severity of the challenge from Nick Pennington. He gets a talking to for his troubles, and now a rather central free kick for the Central Coast Mariners. a rather agricultural challenge wasn't it really just lunging in just uh, back to that chat on Sheridan he's going to be tested today isn't he with Torres and Farrell one of the deadliest duos down the left in the A-League yeah Max Ballard has he got a taste for goal scoring Lining this one up, Angel Torres. It is that takes it to the back post. It was a great ball in right into the perfect area. And well defended by Wellington Phoenix. Lucas Kelly healed. Clears long, but again only as far as Storm Roo. Now Dan Hall turns back and finds Mikel Docker. If the Phoenix are playing with two left backs in. Sam Sutton and Lucas Kelly healed. Mariners are playing with two right backs, Mikhail Docker yep. and Storm Roo. <laughs> the tactical battle. How many fullbacks are they going to have? Well, well, we'll counteract that with ours. Exactly the same. How many fullbacks do you need on a football pitch? <laughs> Docker. That's well defended by Lucas Kelly healed. You know, I mentioned the Ollie Roos and the Ollie Whites. Lucas Kelly healed is one of the Ollie Whites who'll be. Hoping to head off to Paris. There are a number of them in this side. The likes of Ben Old, full Kiwi internationals are also in that age category. And Giancarlo Italiano has given so many of them their break this season as well. There he is. The former assistant to Ufuk Tale, who has been 
along with this Wellington Phoenix side, the real revelation of this season. They were tipped by many to really struggle this season. An unknown coach, a largely unknown squad, a couple of veterans at the back in Wharton, up front with Barbarousas. Oscar Zavada has been injured most of the season. And yet here they are, perhaps three points away from, as you said, Maka getting one hand on the Premier's plate. And in that respect, this really is a massive match of football for the Wellington Phoenix and for the Central Coast Mariners. Well, obviously, excuse me, obviously a draw helps Wellington in this as well, keeps them three points, but it keeps it very tight, doesn't it? One, one loss in the remaining matches and the Mariners can jump above them with that win, extra win that they've got. So ideally, obviously three points to, to really open up that gap and cut the Mariners adrift. One of the impressive things about Wellington Phoenix this season is Krajev's little touchback for old. He is quick, Ben Old. Fantastic, desperate defending from Brian Kaltak. Throwing himself in front of old's shot. He's won it back. Taps given it away. Sheridan with Salas. Now Nisbet and perhaps an opportunity for the Mariners to break forward now. With Max Ballard. He's got Qual ahead of him. Docker to his right. Angel Torres wants it cut back, Docker again. Ballard takes over into the area, diving into the challenge. Got to be careful, last season these were two passionate draws between these two sides that ended in all sorts of melees and fisticuffs at the end of the matches, both of them. And if anything, the stakes are even higher. Now, oh, it's another free kick in an almost identical position to the one that Torres whipped in a couple of minutes ago. And again, it's Farrell getting forward in that inside position. He loves to come and underlap Torres and get in that inside space just around the edge of the box. And it's Barbarousas he just gets sucked into the foul. And he knows it straight away, doesn't he? Now, Angel Torres whipped it towards the back post. It was well defended. Is he going to try it again? Max Ballard raises the arm this time. He's paced it out. Is he going to go for goal? He does, but it's a comfortable one for Alex Paulson. Well, it was a little closer than the last one, so it, it was on. It was an option. Just didn't quite get the direction. Straight down the middle. You can see the active support behind the goal there for the Central Coast Mariners as it's another. Throw in for Mikhail Docker, back with Dan Hall. The Mariners will try and build again. Jacob Farrell, one of the most fouled players in the competition this season. That last foul on him was foul number 50. So a little half-century stat early on in this one for Jacob Farrell. Who oh, is Danny Vukovic under pressure from Costa Barbarousas. And he just manages to survive. We saw one gift at the other end when Lucas kelly Heald gave the ball away. Vukovic almost did the same. He's normally so assured with his, the ball at his feet, isn't he, Dana Vukovic? Just didn't really seem to have an option there. Salas, strong, good awareness. Krajev, strong as well, somehow emerges. But Torres doesn't give up. Krajev tracking back. And already you can see what it means to these two sets of players. They're not giving anything away, Krajev. Likes the fact that the crowd are getting involved too. We 
we saw a couple of meaty challenge early in the match. A little bit of physicality there. All players looking to get involved. Nothing wrong with that. Docker knocked the ball into a difficult area for Brad Tapp, where Bozhidar Krajev was lurking. The first and only Bulgarian ever to play in the Isuzu Ute A-League. Maybe he'll start a trend with his performances so far. Let's head down to Daniel Garb, who's with us this afternoon at Industry Group Stadium. What's the atmosphere like down there, Garby, now that the rain has finally stopped? Well, it's fantastic, thankfully, because uh, there were some concerns from the uh, Mariners staff that the crowd wouldn't be sufficient for a game of the stature, of course. But thankfully, the sun came out this morning and I'm told plenty of tickets were sold. It was a wonderful feeling uh, driving in to uh, the Central Coast this afternoon. You saw plenty of yellow shirts streaming into the stadium. Great atmosphere here and uh, they're cheering on their side in a very big day. And they're going to have another free kick here to try and cheer a little bit harder. Thank you, Daniel Garve on the sidelines in Gosford, a yellow card. For Justin Salas. Well, that's the third such free kick in a uh, foul in those areas. You can see Docker driving in towards the box. Salas just diving in, trying to get across, and Docker nipped in before him. And on this occasion, referee Alex King says, enough's enough, and the yellow card is produced. Now, Max Ballard has had his chance. <laughs> it's called rank on him, the South Americans. As it's Angel Torres and Mikael Docker as well. Mikael Docker, who has one penalty goal to his name this season. It is the Brazilian. Oh, and off the post. Paulson was nowhere near it. Brilliant free kick and so unlucky for Mikael Docker. Well, it's a wonderful strike. Look at the bend on that. What a beautiful angle we've got there. And Alex Paulson, I think he thought he was Docker was going to go over the wall. So he sort of threw his weight to the right-hand side and was scrambling to his, to his left. And I don't think he was going to get anywhere near it if that went in. Well, that's the third free kick they've given away. That one a little bit more central. And I'm sure Chief will be saying... Well, no more in that area, thanks. Well, the first one was across, the second saved, and the third off the post. They're getting closer as well, the Central Coast Mariners. Three different free kick takers as well. Pennington. Barbarousas, a little touch for Krajev, can't find him. Torres. Settles things down, and here's Storm Roo now with Docker. Let's see Phoenix so well organised. Those banks of five, and then three. Krajev back to fill the hole as well, and they've won it back. Ben Old couldn't really find an option. Had to try and. Use his pace, he's a fantastic little dribbler. Old as well. Kaltak. It was about this time of the season where the Central Coast Mariners really went up through the gears last year. Finished with that flurry of victories and goals. Ball in behind for Qual, who gets there, and he's won the corner off Scott Wooden. He perhaps could have done a little more to shield it out of play. Well, the opening 27 minutes has been the Mariners almost camped inside Wellington Phoenix half. Plenty of possession, more shots. But the Phoenix will care not to jot. They've been here before. They know how to ride this kind of pressure. 
and they know they have a sting in the tail as well. Ballard, with the sun in his eyes, takes it short with Torres. Sheridan steps out as Docker crosses in. Good header from Wooten. Bradley Tapp is there. Now Storm Root. Nobody really looking for the ball at the back post, so he invites Angel Torres into the game. Torres still. Brad Tapp again. Here's Nisbet. He can make things happen. Nisbet. Overlapping run. Storm Root. Cross to the back post. Farrell is there. Hit on the volley. Cleared by Wooden again, and now Sam Sutton to try and run the, ma the Mariners back into their own half. He's done very well there to pick out Krajev. And he goes again, Sam Sutton. But both sides really swarming around the ball when possession is handed over. Very hard to look up and try and find a teammate in that situation. Well, you can see what it means to both teams. When you lose that ball, gets pressure on the opposition straight away. Don't give them time to get their head up to find a pass. As we've seen so often, Wellington Phoenix waiting for that moment. We talk a lot in a pressing game about triggers. There we saw Houston Salas sprint out to try and close down Farrell. Sheridan on Nisbet. We saw Sydney FC excellent in closing down Torres and Nisbet on this left-hand side as well. Just over a week ago. No doubt Giancarlo Italiano would have been watching Ufuk Tale, his former boss, and seeing what Sydney FC had done. Well, apparently they still speak every week. What would they talk well, about? Well, maybe, <laughs> the the Mariners? Start, maybe at the start of the year, Ufuk was giving advice, and now he's saying, I'm not giving you any more advice. You got some for me? Well, at some point, there is a very good opportunity chance that they will meet in a very important match in the next few weeks now docker what a story that would be as well docker decides to hit it from distance and it fizz past the post i think that time perhaps paulson had it <laughs> covered well i think you thought that was a little closer i was watching paulson and he was just having a little jog he obviously saw it was going wide early but from the angle we were on there. It looked like it was be sailing into the top corner. He did have options, Docker, to his right as well to play, but decided on the strike. Vukovic again deciding against using Dan Hall, who was just in front of him. Barbarousas closing it down now. You can see Costa Barbarousas asking for a bit more of a high press. It doesn't come. The Mariners can ease forward. Ballard back outside with Rue. Docker making the run. Tap with Farrell. again with Ballard Docker it's very organized and disciplined defense from Wellington Phoenix Max Ballard coming back from an offside position there Sheridan turns inside. It's a good little run. He might get another chance. Matt Sheridan, Krajev. Pennington just missed it under pressure from Nisbet. Quoll back with Josh Nisbet. There you can see how dangerous Nisbet is with that incredible ability to turn 
on a sixpence. With Farrell. In all, there's no slouch in that department as well of being able to turn and react quickly. Well, that was an important intervention from Dan Hall. It was a sloppy pass from Josh Nisbet. Ben Old, if he just got past that challenge of Dan Hall, had the support of Barbarusis and Kraev. And that's what they do very well, Wellington Phoenix. They wait, they soak up the pressure, they wait for the opposition to make a mistake, and they pounce. Caltac. Central Coast Mariners with nearly two-thirds possession in the match so far. Krayev with Old. Barbarousas charging forward. Sheridan's at the back post. Old has spotted him. And the forward momentum has ended there. Can they take a step backwards to take two forwards? Not on this occasion as Old has to slide in. Docker. Caltac is Farrell. Well, rather fortunately, Angel Torres has come away with it against Sheridan. Torres, one way, then the other. They want to keep him off that left foot if they can. Here's Nisbet in support. Back for Torres. Danger! And brilliant defending. It was very nicely worked from the Mariners and Scott Wooden with a very important block. Well, it looked, at like, it looked like the Phoenix had done enough. There was plenty of black shirts who got back. You can see there, 5-6. And as the ball comes to, comes to Niz, but he just passes inside. And it's a great strike from Angel Torres. So lethal on that left foot. Scott Wooten with a timely intervention. Paulson probably did have it covered, but he wasn't to, to know that. Second corner of the afternoon for the Central Coast Mariners. Ten minutes to go in the first half. A very tense opening 35 minutes between these two sides, in which the Mariners have already hit the post once. Ballard's ball in. Krayev with the head up. Kaltak looking for the flick. Here's Dan Hall. A little rush of blood. It might stay in. It has done. Max Ballard again. With Farrell. Now Torres. He already was thinking about his shot by the time he took his first touch there. Angel Torres and the Costa Rican Salas was out very quickly to close him down. Docker again. Mariners with so much of the football. Tap. With Hall. Again, they resist the press and they found a little opening. With Rue. Towards Qual. Cleared again by Wooden. Respite, but not for long as Storm Roo is caught by Sam Sutton. And that's another set pace. Here's another look at that run from Storm Roo and just puts it across that near post area and I think he was just saying there to Alu I need you to get across the first man Phoenix always seem to have plenty of numbers in those areas don't they they defend the six yard and penalty spot so well and they're three big units as well in Sermon Wooten and Kelly Hill Torres has ball in it's a great ball to the back post and Brian Kaltak should have had his third goal of the season. What an opportunity. Well, what about the ball from Angel Torres? He's teasing. You could see one, two yellow shirts coming, and Brian Kaltak at the back post should have done better. He seemed to miss time it a little. Didn't get the connection. Managed to escape the markers, but you need to get boot on ball Didn't quite get it done 
Wellington trying to find that little bit of space up front. In the end, it was Sermon that looked long. And it almost worked with Krajev and Barbarousas making the runs in behind. Free kick on Brian Kaltak in the end. And his turn to look long for Alu Kual. Wrestling with Kelly Heald, illegally so. The crowd don't like it. Let's head back down to Daniel Garb on the sidelines. What do the benches make of that, Garby? Well, Giancarlo Italiano doesn't like what he's seeing at the moment. It's pretty clear I'm sitting right behind the Wellington Phoenix bench. That they're happy to play on the counter-attack as long as they are organised and well-structured at the back. Mark Jackson, though, furious with that decision as Alu Kual was through on goal. And as you can see, he's copped the yellow card from Alex King, and you'll just have to cool down for a moment. But on the other bench next to me, Giancarlo Italiano isn't much happier as Mark Jackson gives Alex King a piece of his mind. They're not happy with the way in which they're being pulled apart defensively. They can tell that the Mariners have got the game on their terms and they're just opening up too many opportunities for them. And the likes of Adam Griffiths and Giacolo Italiano having a lot of discussions right now on the Phoenix bench about trying to be better structured defensively because the game plan that they've set out is not being executed at the moment because of the way in which their defence is set up. Thank you, Daniel Garb on the sidelines. and. Oh, Jackson got a fairly stern, stern talking to there, like a naughty schoolboy. Well, he clearly didn't think that it was a foul. He thought Alu Kual was away and had done enough to be allowed to play on. The header from Kaltak, not once but twice against Bojadar Krajev. Pennington wins it back and again. The free kick's given there. Docker has been stepped on by Pennington. There you can see the stud marks on the upper arm. Well, he does stand on him, but I don't think there's anything malicious at all. I think he just, when Docker falls over, he just rather stumbles, doesn't he, and falls backward onto the arm. Alex Rufert is missing this afternoon because of uh, stepping on a player. The, that's been looked at by VAR, and the word is accidental contact. You can see there Pennington just say, I lost my balance and fell back, which you could clearly see was the case. Now long from Caltech. Wooten's head up, only finds Torres. Docker. With Ballard, a little bit of space on the right-hand side. They work it to Storm Rue. Now Docker goes again. Rue. Brad Tapp able to turn. Invite Farrell into the game. Towards Qual. Gets his head on it, but can't generate the power required to try and beat Alex Paulson from there. Well, he gets up well, Alu Kual, but it was a difficult one. There was no real power on the ball to try and guide it himself. And while stretching, he was never going to trust, uh, trouble Paulson. Fantastic ball from Paulson there. Pinged it right into Sam Sutton, and it invites Ben Old forward. Pennington again. With Sheridan. No way past Farrell. Launching himself into the challenge. He knew he couldn't let Jacob Farrell get away. And he's got that down to a fine art, Jacob Farrell. Just stepping 50, across. 51st, 54th foul now against him. Is he said about a few four already, or five yeah. now already today. He does that so often. He just sucks the defender in and then just gets his body across and shields the ball, feels the contact. So many times it becomes an easy out for the Mariners. Sometimes you wonder if the opposition take note of this and think, well, just don't give the easy foul away. Fourth foul on Jacob Farrell already this afternoon.
moment. The Wellington Phoenix yet to really test Danny Vukovic in the Mariners' goal. That's not to say they won't at some point this afternoon. This is very much their modus operandi this season. Now Sheridan up the line. Is this the moment? Barbarousas as they look to spring forward. Oh, trying to turn, looking for the contact of Hall. There was just enough to knock Ben Ald off his feet. Oh, was that strong from Brad Tapp. I don't think he got too much of the ball as he collected Sam Sutton, who's stayed down. That's hurt his right ankle, Sam Sutton. Houston Salas asking the question as the Mariners come forward. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm asking the question as well, because he went in full-blooded and swung the leg, and I don't think he was anywhere near the ball. Now he got a whole lot of Sam Sutton, who has to be careful here, because he's not going to be able to go with Stormaru at the moment. They're going to have to stop play. The Phoenix, as soon as they can. Krajev, perhaps they won't just yet, because the break is on. Old Krajev and Barbarousas, the goal threat for the Wellington Phoenix, is on the charge. Outside, Barbarousas. Still Costa Barbarousas. Will he try it himself? Deflected and easy into the arms of Vukovic. Well, when a, any other A-League team takes up this much pressure and you think, well, they might get one or two chances, you think, OK, you can live with that. But the Wellington Phoenix have shown that they might only need one or two chances. And that might be enough for them. Sheridan. Down this right-hand side, dealt with by Farrell again. They've only lost three times this season. Wellington Phoenix. When they have struggled in matches, they've invariably managed to get a draw out of it as well. Seven of those to go with their 13 wins. Torres, 45 minutes are up. We've got two minutes of stoppage time as Torres comes inside on the right. Still Torres. He's trying to catch everyone unawares there with the right-footed effort. Still finds it difficult to get a clean strike away, doesn't he? It's a nice bit of explosiveness there and looks up. Look at all those black shirts in between. Miguel Torres and Alex Paulson. He just saw Finn Sermon and Scott Wooden just saying to Sheridan, keep going. He's been up and down this right flank a fair bit, the youngster, in his first ever start. He's just sucking in a few deep breaths at the moment. I mentioned the goal-scoring threat of that attacking trio. Barbarousas, 11. Krajev, 6. Old, 4. That's 21 of their... 36 goals scored this season. So nearly two-thirds of them. They've also benefited from three own goals. That's the fourth top scorer in this Phoenix side, along with their absent skipper this evening, Alex Rufa. Only eight goal scorers in this side. It's the fewest goal scorers for an A-League side this season concentrated particularly in that attacking trio I mentioned then you look at the Central Coast Mariners who have the most scorers that threat really shared around 16 different goal scorers this season now that Max Ballard added his name to the list on Tuesday night and there is the end of a first half in which we talk about goal scorers who have been unable to score so far. In the opening 45 minutes, Mikhail Docker went closer than anyone as the Mariners did have the best chances. Docker curling a free kick against the post in the 25th minute. Alex Paulson was left to watch as that one bounced back off the woodwork. Otherwise, he made an outstanding save as well. 
in the opening minutes of the match, but no goals in this top of the table clash. A match which will have a massive bearing on who lifts the Premier's plate. At half time, it's the Central Coast Mariners nil, Wellington Phoenix nil. And we will be right back at Industry Group Stadium with the half time show after the break.
Cheers, Garvey. Yes, a real tactical battle between these two sides. Maka, if anything, what we expected, a match between a side that liked the football, that liked to attack against a side that loved defending. They, you can feel that this Wellington Phoenix side really thrive on that. Yeah, you do. And uh, look, it's, there's no doubt that the Central Coast Mariners were the better team in the first half. They created the better chances, had more possession. But as I said in the call, any other team, you'd be thinking, well, we've got these guys. But Wellington Phoenix do this time and time again. They sit in, they soak up pressure, and then they sting just when you think you've got them. And this is the early first half chance from the Mariners from a uh, turnover. And this guy, he's been fantastic this year, hasn't he, Paulson? At full stretch there. And Buzadar Cray, he's been one of the main outlets, as he has been all season for Wellington Phoenix. Strong, tactical, and it was the Mariners who had the better chances overall, created more of the opportunities. And if that one was going in, there was nothing Paulson was going to do. You could see he was scrambling to get there. And this is basically how the first half went for the majority of the 45 minutes. Now, a lot of the action was played in the Mariners attacking third. But apart from that early save from Paulson and the effort off the post, there was Docker again, just testing Alex Paulson's judgment from distance. They kept coming, the Mariners. They are the home side. And of course, if anything, a draw will suit the Phoenix a little bit better because the Central Coast Mariners need the three points to go top. Well, they do. And obviously, this is the kind of chances that the Mariners will be ruining at half time. I'm sure that Mark Jackson will be happy with the first half performance. But the longer they keep going without scoring a goal, the, the more and more that the Wellington Phoenix will think, well, we can nick this. Well, there you see those stats that are very much in Central Coast Mariners' favour. But as you say, Maka, this is nothing new. Fans of Wellington Phoenix will be just saying, this is rope-a-dope. This is what we do. We sit back on the ropes. And as you punch yourself out, then we spring into action with the likes of Old and Krajev and Barbarousas. Final third entries. Everything in the Mariners' favour. Let's have a look at Mikhail Docker then, who was one of the real protagonists in that opening 45 minutes. He's been lively, Maka. He started out at right back, started out playing second fiddle this season to Storm Rue at right back. Now he's invented himself as a right winger, midfielder, and he's everywhere. Yeah, he did have a, a, a brief spell in his career where he has played in, in that right wing position. And between him and Storm Rue, they seem to be really getting a good understanding uh, when to overlap, when one to drive forward, but he's a real industrious player, isn't he? Strong on the ball, loves to get forward, doesn't mind to strike from distance as we've seen today. And he leads our Paramount Plus player index at half time. There it is, Mikhail Docker, 87.2. Jacob Farrell's seen a lot of the football as well. Paulson has made a couple of very smart saves and also used his woodwork perfectly. Torres and Ballard are there because they are in the side dominating possession and dominating touches of the football. Garby, back to you on the sideline at Industry Group Stadium.
Massive month of April football coming up on Paramount Plus and Network 10. Welcome back to Industry Group Stadium. Scoreless at the break and no changes to either side in this top of the table clash. The tension is palpable between these two sides. Victory could prove the difference in the race for the Premier's plate. Defeat, Daniel McBreen, could prove disastrous for either of these two sides because they've worked so hard to get where they are. A victory is precious, of course, but perhaps a draw just keeps you in the hunt for another week. Well, it's a huge 45 minutes of football, isn't it, for both these teams? And I'm sure that both managers at half-time were reasonably happy with the way their team played. Mark Jackson in particular. I'm sure Chiefy would have been relatively happy. He's asking him just a little bit more going forward, but he knows that these players that are combining now. Well, great little touches from Barbarousas and Old as they come forward here. The cross was just not measured perfectly, but Barbarousas with the follow-up. And inside 60 seconds of the restart, the Phoenix have had their best chance. Well, just as I was saying, how he'll want a little bit more, and he knows that they've got it. Barbarousas, Old and Cray have all combined to fire a warning shot in the opening minute of the second half to Central Coast Mariners. Well, the biggest ever A-League victory came here at Industry Group Stadium for the Phoenix. 8-2 winners they were. In fact, two of their three biggest away wins ever in the history of the competition came here. It'll be a pretty special second half if they can <laughs> match that. But uh, certainly they have an excellent record here. In fact, in the head-to-head... -head, They've won eight times, drawn three, and lost nine in the A-League. So basically, it's like a home match for them against a very good opponent in the Central Coast Mariners. Ballard, great little touch for Docker, who was the most dangerous, deflected, and this time well wide. But again, he's getting into those areas, Mikhail Docker. Well, we said that... Jacob Farrell likes to come inside. Well, he does as well, doesn't he? Gets right inside and becomes another midfield in the central area. This time on the left foot. And lo and behold, it's another blocked shot. The Wellington Phoenix. Ballard takes it short with the birthday boy, Angel Torres. Dockers cross back post. Paulson with a good punch. Brad Tapp with Nisbet. He tries to curl it into that far top corner. Couldn't get over at the new Socceroo. He's enjoying a fantastic season. And he would love that third goal of the campaign against the Phoenix in a big match just to set the Mariners on their way back to the top of the table. Little corner of yellow. You can hear chanting for the Phoenix. No way through for Ben Old. And again, you can see every time the ball is there to be contested, there are the Phoenix supporters. A good crowd of a little corner of yellow. It's quite a quite a big corner of yellow. See them just there on the top right of your screen looking across the ground as we might see it here because here comes Angel Torres with Nisbet down the left-hand side. Torres accelerates through the middle. Great little touch for Doca. Mikel Doca! Well, he got plenty behind it again, but he can't get it on target. Well, great lead-up play from Angel Torres. The run from Alu Kual as well dragged the play, as you can see, which creates the space for Mikhail Docker, and he has to hit the target from, from that area. His touch probably took him a little wider than he was hoping to, and then was forced to rush a little. When you've got one of the best goalkeepers in the league between the posts that you're trying to beat, 
You've got to at least hit the target, otherwise you've got absolutely no chance. Sheridan. Made a great start to the match down that right-hand side, Sheridan. Jacob Farrell started to just force him back. Here's Barbarousas now. He's got Salas alongside him. Just turned blindly into Brad Tapp, and now the Mariners have it back again. Torres with Qual. It's nicely worked. Storm Roo. They can get numbers forward here on the Central Coast. Docker forced to put the brakes on. He does so. Ballard with Caltac. Again, you can see that 5-3-2 of Wellington Phoenix. It gets a little bit harder each line you pass. Two, then three, and then five. See how you go. Ballard trying to do just that, and Alu Kual almost poked it back into his path. Well, that was a perfect example there, as you were saying, it gets harder and harder as Ballard stepped forward. The black shirts just engulfed him. Well, they've been exchanging fouls, most of them on Storm Roo in the first half, but Roo just catching Sam Sutton there, who I'm pleased to say has emerged from the changing room at half time because he was still limping after that very heavy challenge from Bradley Tapp. Sermon with Sheridan. And the referee's whistle comes to his rescue there. It may have been a bit soft, but I guess fortune follows the brave because he took on about three. Well, he just threw a little glance at Alex Kinn, didn't he? To say, come on. The foul, please. Alex King said, yep, no problem. Something with old, it's another strong challenge. Giancarlo Italiano not happy on the sidelines as here's Docker again. This time in a more conventional right-sided position as he rolls it towards Nisbet but couldn't find him. Now Farrell, he drives it in low towards Qual. Torres. Can he produce something out of nothing, Angel Torres? Because there are plenty of black shirts inside that 18-yard box. Not easy to find Alu Kuo in amongst them. Kaltak with Farrell again. Ballard with Tap. Sheridan's touch, unintentionally all the way back to his goalkeeper. They do make life very difficult for their opponents, don't they? Wellington Phoenix, he's had a fantastic season. Scott Wooten alongside Finn Sermon, breakout season for him. His first full campaign where he's really been... started every single match. And as I said, he and Wooten played every single minute so far. He picked up that head injury in training while on international duty, Finn Sermon. Here's Docker. You can see that white bandage at the top of your screen as here comes Nisbet now. Nisbet for Docker again. Oh, he tried to sell the big dummy to Salas. Well, he just forgot to take the ball with him, didn't he? Just missed it. He has looked dangerous this evening for the Mariners. Drifting inside into that central midfield area around the edge of the box. You see taking up a position there again, allowing Storm Roo to come on the outside. Given away cheaply by Max Ballard this time. Ben Old. Waiting for support to arrive in the form of Sam Sutton, but there's no quick transition this time as Sutton just telling everyone to calm things down a moment. Kelly Hill, that's a great ball. Up the channel for Krayev. Under pressure. Rolls Dan Hall. Now finds Pennington. Space on the right hand side. He lifts the ball towards Sheridan. And again, 
Chris Farrell. A little flick for Salas, but it runs away. And that's disappointing because that was a promising situation for the Phoenix. And all started again from Bozadir Krajev and his run in the, challenge, in the channel. Sorry, Dan Hall came tight just when he thought he was able to get a toe in and win it. Krajev again managed to roll him and get that ball back inside. It's been a good battle that one tonight. All again. Hasn't been an easy one for the strikers, has it? For Qual and Barbarousas as Dan Hall decides to go on a charge and add a little bit of support for his front men. Finds Torres as well. It's brilliant play from Hall. Now Torres whips the cross in. Missed by Pennington. And again, nobody in that 18-yard box for the Central Coast Mariners. Hello, Qual. That time looked like he didn't really want to get in there. you spoke about the stats and the tactical battle between these two sides they're the two sides that crossed the least in the a-league this season so perhaps Alu Kual realized there was no need to try and get in there because the cross wasn't coming from Angel Torres well there's another side to that as well is that because the Wellington Phoenix gets so many bodies in that area as a striker you feel like you're never getting a touch of the ball so you start to drift out of those areas going to feel like you want to get involved get a touch on the ball when they do finally get the ball in there you're out of position Pennington turned into trouble in the form of Torres who was looking low into the feet of Qual Salas with old who's fouled by Docker Krayev has to go it alone Looking for Barbarousas and the always spectacular Brian Kaltek is there again. Well, that's been another more off the ball challenge between those two. Barbarousas and Brian Kaltek, he shadowed him everywhere. Costa Barbarousas makes such wonderful runs. Goes one way, then back the other. He's been shadowed all day by Kaltek. Graef and Dan all have had a few comings together as well. Now Ben Ol takes over. Barbarousas, and guess who's there? Kaltak again. Now Salas for Sheridan. Looks up, crosses back post. Barbarousas gets there. It's a great header back across the face of goal. And Brian Kaltak, he has such an incredible leap. Ballas just giving it straight back again to Ben Old. Accelerates. Oh, and that wasn't so far away either trying to catch out Danny Vukovic at his near post. Well, in trying to stop the ball going out for a corner, Ballard backheeled it in to Ben Old, which is not recommended in those areas. He has such wonderful feet. You see there just going on the outside and trying to catch Danny Vukovic unaware at the near post. It's two good chances at the start of the second half for the Wellington Phoenix. Just starting to come out of their shell a little bit here. Storm Roo. They just wait and wait. It's as if they know you're going to make a mistake at some point, Wellington Phoenix. And the key is that they make the most of it. It's another foul gone against Nick Pennington. And we're going to have no, we're not going to have our first substitution of this one. As Alex King looks up and goes, well, come on, let's go. Play on, Docker, again. And again, it's blocked. This time, Kelly Heald. Well, he's on a one-man mission. Well, I was going to say, you love, your, you love your stats. Let's see how many shots he's had from the edge of the box that have been blocked by a Willington Phoenix player. Well, it's Houston Salas. Who's coming off? What I can tell you is Mikhail Docker has had six shots at goal now, more than any other side in the competition. So Tim Payne has made a quick recovery and comes on to replace Sheridan at right back. A good 60 minutes from Sheridan. Salas also makes way as Mohamed Alte, the former Newcastle Jet, comes into the game. 
against the old enemy, the Central Coast Mariners. That was a good performance from Sheridan. 60 minutes. And Salah's probably a little quiet for his liking. And it's not a bad couple of substitutions to bring on. Alte and Payne, who have been exceptional this season. Got his first two A-League goals, Tim Payne, this season as well. Alex Rufa got his first goals. Mo Alte is still waiting. Perhaps that will come here at Industry Group Stadium. Tap with Nisbet. Docker again. Oh, that's a good ball for Rue. The cutback, the header, Torres with the blonde hair. The birthday boy celebrates with a goal that could blow the Premiership plate race wide open. Docker was involved along with Storm Rue with the assist. And Angel Torres, his 13th goal of this remarkable season for him. And the Mariners lead. Well, very rarely do you see a ball get through the Wellington Phoenix defence. You can see here Mikkel Docker on the Harvey Norman replay. What a wonderful ball that is. Splits the defence. Storm Rue with a wonderful cross. And that man, Angel Torres, with a diving header, puts it away. A wonderful goal. And this man has been brilliant tonight. What a pass that is, defence splitting pass. And Angel Torres celebrates the lead for Central Coast Mariners. Well, until Tuesday night, he hadn't scored since the 6th of February. He's now added two in two games. And perhaps they do have a contender for the golden boot as well. In Angel Torres, they of course lost Marco Tulio halfway through this season. The Central Coast Mariners. Ben Old goes down in the area. Play on, says the referee. Here goes Nisbet. The Phoenix will have to come out of their shells now. They are chasing the game and the Phoenix will try and make them pay. Or rather, the Mariners will try and make them pay. Well, at the moment, Josh Nisbet's trying to do it all on his own. He's just covered about 400 metres with the ball at his feet. And it's no surprise, is it, that Mikhail Docker coming inside into that little pocket of space had a hand in the goal. He's been a real thorn in the side of Wellington Phoenix tonight. It's a wonderful ball in for the overlapping run of Storm Roo. That had to be inch perfect, didn't it? Yep. You could see Sam Sutton sliding in. He just couldn't reach it. Now Alte. And you wonder now, does that goal really change the outlook for the Phoenix? Do they now start to come out a little bit more? They were happy to soak up the pressure. As we said, a draw did help them. This scoreline obviously is not on the script. They need to come out and really chase the game now. Central Coast Mariners with a crucial one goal lead and leads here against Wellington Phoenix have been hard to come by over the years. Their last win, 2022. Was by five goals to nil, their biggest ever victory over Wellington Phoenix. The next one before that, 2018, and before that, 2015. What we'll also see is the Central Coast Mariners' ability to manage a result as well because. He may just have lost a little bit of that defensive strength that they showed in recent months after that loss to Sydney FC and then conceding the opening goal against Melbourne City 
on Tuesday night with Tolgay Arslan. But they have kept more clean sheets than any other side this competition. They did go for a run of 10 in 12 matches before failing to keep one in the last two, as here's Kual. Alu Kual again looking for Torres. Look how desperate they are to try and close down space. They're slipping and sliding everywhere, and it's been given away to Docker into the box. Nisbet trying to curl it all oh, just wide. What a goal that would have been. Well, it was shades of his goal against, I think it was the Jets, about a month ago. He just turned and swiveled on the left foot. Alex Paulson at full strength. I'm not sure he was getting there. And this will be the perfect angle. And you see the bend, it just doesn't come back. Well, very rarely does the second half go by quietly on the Central Coast. Ballard. Back with tap. Farrell inside with Ballard again, here's Storm Roo. He looks up. Again, Docker. Opening up the space on the right hand side if Storm Roo wants it. Ballard again, and the Central Coast Mariners will be quite happy to put their foot on the ball and take the sting out of any potential Phoenix counter attack, mind you. It's still the Phoenix game plan, which won't have changed much. Nisbet, he strides into the area. He's been allowed to run Nisbet. Now Torres takes over. Ballard wants it on the edge of the area. Clever little touch, first time for Docker. On his left foot this time. Didn't look too far away. The Mariners are right on top at the moment. Let's head back down to Garby on the sidelines. Oh, they're right on top and the crowd is driving them on. Wonderful atmosphere down here. The noise just erupted when Angel Torres uh, put that in the back of the net to put the Mariners 1-0 up. Then, as you said, Robbie Josh Nisbet carried the ball 400 metres. The crowd got going again. Then there was the big Nisbet chance. Here the Phoenix go. And here goes Costa Barbarousas up against Kaltak. And again, it's Kaltak that comes out on top. What a match he's had at the back as well. And he manages to find Alu Kual. They're streaking forward again, Nisbet with Torres on his left foot, Torres cuts it towards Quall, claimed by Paulson. Well, end-to-end -end stuff. Barbarousas, he only needs that little half a chance, doesn't he? It was Ben Old that found him. They have developed a fantastic understanding since they've been together in Barbarousas' third spell with the Wellington Phoenix. Krayev trying to outmuscle Kaltak. Nobody there for Scott Wooden. Kaltak again, Alte trying to put the pressure on. Worked that well. Bradley Tapp getting the right side of Alte. And now Storm Root with Nisbet. And this is where the Mariners are starting to find some pockets of space. Nisbet is getting more and more of the ball all of a sudden. We well, just wonder if having so little possession, particularly in the second half, the fatigue is starting to set in, but here they go again. And this is where they are so dangerous. Ben Old bursting into action. Oh, he wasn't far away from finding Krayev there, and he's been caught late by Docker. Free kick earned by Ben Old, who wants a yellow card for the Brazilian fullback for fouling him. He's going to get a free kick, maybe just a little too far out for a direct effort at goal. Well, he didn't get anywhere near the ball, did he? See there, he just collects the left boot. Ben Old. And just as we were starting to say, ah, the Wellington Phoenix fatiguing. Ben Old takes off. And as per usual, he has a couple of mates with him at full pelt. Exactly. Has to be. 
One of the most dangerous trios in the A-League, those three. Charging forward on the counter-attack. Ben Old with the free kick. Pennington there as well. It will be Old. Chips at back post. Well, Scott Wooten in the end didn't manage to even keep it in play. And that's disappointing for the Phoenix. Mind you, they've only scored four set-piece goals this season. Three of them were penalties. There are the 32 goals, all from open play this season. But you can look at it two ways, the lowest percentage of set-piece goals or the highest percentage of open play goals. Van Hattam comes on for Kelly Heal. That is a resolutely attacking move. Nick Pennington is a like-for-like -like swap with Finn Conchi, who comes into the game. Another who'll be hoping to be on the plane to Paris for the Olympic Games. The young Phoenix number five. And substitutions number three and four for Giancarlo Italiano as well. With 20 minutes left to play. Sutton. Conchi will have to very quickly adapt to the pace of the game because Alu Kual throws himself at absolutely everything. Manhattan. He's a really good one touch player. Moore's pain has been caught. Yellow card for Brian Kaltak. Payne has stayed down. Well, Brian Kaltak was at him and he got a touch on the ball there, and I tend to agree with him. It have been the follow through that caught the eye of Alex King. Still wants to see it on the big screen, doesn't he? Trial by video, didn't touch him. Tim Payne is back to his feet now. Kiwi International standing over this one. It'll be his right foot or Ben Old's left. No, it will be Payne to deliver. Sermon. Wooten, Krajew, Van Hattem and Barbarousas. The targets in the penalty box. Every single yellow shirt back inside the 18-yard line. In it comes from Payne. It's a good ball as well. Quoll with the header away. Alte back with Sutton. Oh, the pressure on the ball carrier in almost every moment is intense in this contest. And it's a corner for the Phoenix. Their first of the afternoon. And the Phoenix fans starting to find their voice. Sutton's ball in is not a bad one. Wooten now at the back post. Barbarousas, oh! What a clearance from Angel Torres. How did that stay out? Well, he scored the only goal of the match at one end, and he has prevented one at the other. Well, I think it hit the crossbar on the way up, yeah, didn't it? It did. Now, as the ball comes here, it's a headed on. And that is unbelievable. I thought that was just going to nestle into the far corner from Barbarousas. And at full stretch, Angel Torres up onto the crossbar, saves the day. Well, he has burgeoning cult status here on the Central Coast. And the birthday goal and the bleached hair, and now an acrobatic clearance from under his own crossbar. 
will only help reinforce that more and more. Alu Kual has typically run himself into the ground. He makes way for Jing Reese. Christian Theoharis is coming on for Storm Roo in the first changes for Mark Jackson and the Central Coast Mariners. Storm Roo applauds the home fans. Jing Reese will be that lone striker role. His number one mission to put pressure on, to run hard, to open up space. Thea Harris, the creator, will head into that wide midfield role with Mikael Docker moving back to right back. Docker's head up, one for Reese to chase. He's got Thea Harris alongside him. Reese making his way into the middle. Thea Harris against Conchi. Thea Harris one way, then the other. And young Finn Conchi is up to the challenge. Looks for the return ball from Ben Old, but can't get there. Well, you can only admire the discipline even in difficult situations of this side as Nisbet was looking for Torres again it's cleared by pain but what Giancarlo Italiano has fashioned with this Wellington Phoenix side these youngsters a few veterans like Tim Payne but how they can stay in a football match and you just know they're going to be dangerous right to the last second yeah well I don't think there's anyone walking away from this one now is there Thea Harris trying to get the throw. It goes Sutton's way. Talk. Sutton. Forced to chase back and get on the end of that one. So they switched to just four at the back when Kelly Heald went off a few minutes ago now. Looking for more presence higher up the pitch. And Hatton on the right wing of a more traditional 4-4-2 now. Tim Payne has done well. Barbarousas with Van Hattam, old in the middle, cry up arriving, Barbarousas, oh, there it is, Ben Old, it illustrates the point perfectly, Barbarousas coming to look for the ball, Tim Payne with the pinpoint cross, no one tracked the run, and goal number five of the season for Ben Old, and the Phoenix are never out of a contest. Well, we'll see on the Harvey Norman replay. You just spoke about the change in formation, allowing more bodies forward. And look at that ball. Dan Hall gets caught a little bit too on the near post. And Ben Old drifts off the back of his shoulder. And it's a wonderful ball from Van Haddam and says, go on, put that away. And Ben Old Julia obliges. He's been good tonight. And that's just reward for a good performance. And you said it, Robbie, they are never out. They will never die wondering. You can never rest as long as the Phoenix are still there. A breakout season for Ben Old. A word for the provider, Oscar Van Haddam. It took him three A-League seasons. He's only a youngster to get that first ever goal that came against Adelaide a couple of weeks back. But he's a quality footballer in the making. Oscar Van Haddam and that cross was absolutely perfect. And now, you said no one was leaving the stadium, no one turning off the TV. Well, this one is intriguingly poised with just over 10 minutes left to play. 
the Mariners will have to do it all over again if they want to rest away top spot in the league. What a battle this has been. Between a Mariners side that have tried to seize the initiative, that have tried to take the game. But the Phoenix, if they're sitting top of the table, you just got a little glimpse of why. I was looking back at the ladders after each round of matches this season. After round seven, there were 10 points between these two sides after the disastrous start. And basically, Wellington were already nearly top of the table. They've been there or thereabouts all season. The Mariners have been reeling them in. Paul on the charge this time. The gap from 10 points in round seven for a little while looked like it would be none. Thea Harris, he'll get there, the cutback. Look at all the black shirts, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Count them off, everybody back. Well, I said it earlier, seldom does a second half go by at Industry Group Stadium that nobody is excited. This is another fantastic clash. Top of the table, Premiership plate, could be decided tonight, and both teams going for it. Dockers delivery, Hall is there, Sermon, great header. Nisbet has won that in the end against Ben Old. Now, Brad Tapp with Brian Kaltak. He looks up, Kaltak lines up. That is ambition personified from Brian Kaltak. Well, I think it's just a, blood, a rush of blood, wasn't it? Everyone's got a bit excited. The crowd's now involved. Sometimes I can't help but wonder with this Wellington Phoenix side. If they're a little bit more ambitious at times. They do sit back deep and they soak up pressure. You think sometimes when they expand and just play that football, they really are a fantastic side and they could do more damage. And here's another opportunity. Here they come again with Alte. And Haddon was looking to run in behind. The pass didn't come. Payne now finds the provider of the assist for the Phoenix goal. Manhattan taking on Farrell. Has it taken a deflection off Farrell on the way through? Certainly the Mariners defenders think so. And corner given in the end. Oh, what's Penny, going Penny, on inside yeah, that brain? I was about to say, Penny for his thoughts. It's a head scratcher. It's all graphs and tactics, you can <laughs> see it whizzing around in the think bubble above his head. Tim Payne with the corner. In it comes towards Sermon. Krayev was there again, Docker hooks the ball away. Conchi gives it some air with Paulson. No clean sheet for either of these two goalkeepers today. Farrell just stretching out the hamstrings and calves a little bit there. It's been a month between matches for him. Miguel de Pizio now is coming on with six and a half minutes left. He comes on for Brad Tapp as Mark Jackson decides perhaps it's time to go for it. He can play that number 10 role and Nisbet yeah. drop. We've seen both teams make a few positional changes. Obviously Docker at right back when Theo Harris came on. Now Nisbet drops in for DePizio to take that 10 role. And you see the press now from Wellington Phoenix and had him on that right. And that effort from Van Haddam sees Sutton win it back and the Phoenix have the ball back again. Krayev with Old. Now Wooten. Sermon. And under the press from the Mariners, they manage to play their way around from left to right into the feet of Barbarousas. Now Alte with Barbarousas again. 
he was close to getting his 12th of the season, cleared off the line by Torres. But it was only a stay of execution for the Mariners' defence. Krajev all the way back again. They're trying to tease out the Mariners, are they? We can't counter-attack you from here. Let's take it all the way back and hit you again from deep. Manhattan finds Krajev and takes off. Old, still full of running. Sutton again. Conchi now with Wooden. Mariners to do some more running. Payne. Van Haddam with Alte. Conchi's ball forward. It wasn't a bad ball in the end, splitting the defence, but Tim Payne was caught on his heels. Mariners turn with a bit of the ball to try and build from the back. They're still enjoying over 60% possession the Central Coast Mariners 21 shots to nine but only five on target and they have been profligate in that respect Paulson made a fantastic save to deny Nisbet early on as Depizio is able to turn but not enough on that pass for Reese. well I think you can also credit the Wellington Phoenix defense for that five on target because I reckon there's about 10 block shots in there as well. They do make it difficult to get a clean strike away at Alex Paulson. And when you do, he's generally up to the task as well. Nisbet. Here goes De Pizio down the left-hand side. Torres comes in, creating a little bit of space. Farrell is starting to manage his exertions down that left-hand side now. Here's Docker looking for Thea Harris. Cleared by Krajev. Two and a half minutes left, plus stoppage time. Dan Hall bundled over by Barbarousas. He doesn't like it, but it was just a little too clumsy. Well, Costa Barbarous is trying to say it's a shoulder to shoulder, but. Block shots just came up quickly, Mac. Oh, it was sorry. six <laughs> block shots. Well, it feels like a lot more than that, doesn't it? Now, Angel Torres, who's leading the way in the Paramount Plus player index. It's a clean sweep of the top five for the Central Coast Mariners, but that will count for very little if they can't find that goal they so desperately need. In it comes from Torres, Krajev again, who's been immense defensively as well, Bozidar Krajev. In the air, oh, that one's not so good. A little defensive flick, but it falls safely into the gloves of Paulson. Old. Oh, dispossessed by Thea Harris. Krajev again, wrestling so hard, but Thea Harris holds onto the ball. Angel Torres. Selling dummies, but no one's buying. Back with Ballard. Outside, Docker. The Mariners with the ball, but what can they do with it? Nisbet is forced back again. Depizio wants it from Caltac. Max Ballard. He provided the fireworks on Tuesday night. Who's going to provide it this evening? Caltac's cross, or rather, Farrell's cross towards Reese. Well, the Knicks currently sporting a 5 5 formation. 
Doing whatever they can to get bodies behind the ball. A draw, and they stay three points clear at the top with three games left to play in that quest, that search for a first ever Premier's plate. Torres, are ah, the Mariners going to spoil the party? Torres, the cutback. Conchi clears only as far as Ballard. And his shot was blocked again. Docker. Docker. Still going. Docker! Oh, he's done it, the Brazilian! Well, it was going to be his night. Denied by the woodwork in the first half. And in the first minute of stoppage time, his perseverance, his persistence was not to be denied. And Mikael Docker, with four minutes left to play, has given the Mariners a priceless lead. Well, on the Harvey Norman replay, we'll see a man who has been immense tonight for the Central Coast Mariners. Look at him, he drives in. He's been there on so many occasions tonight. And so many occasions it was blocked. Not this time. He assesses the situation, he sees the space, and off he goes, onto the left foot. And it goes past the despairing Alex Paulson into the far corner. And nestles into the net and erupts industry group stadium what a time for Mikel docker to find the back of the net they come from everywhere is this to be the mariners year and they've still got to deal with the afc cup which is coming up. There may be continental silverware at the end of this incredible journey. What a season it has been. Nick Montgomery leaving as champion. So many players leaving as champions. The rebuild and then the form. And now the Phoenix come again. Ben Hold so close to getting in behind Dan Hall. Krayev gets it back from Conchi. The Phoenix are not done yet. Towards Van Hattem. Danny Vukovic, who's trying to get his heart rate down after the sprint to go and celebrate with Docker as well. There's a little push on Wooten there, which is what he's asking the referee. The chant of Mariners around the stadium. Van Hattem gets it back. Two minutes of stoppage time left. Are the Phoenix to be denied? Never have they finished top of the table in the regular season. They played finals football the last two years only to fall at the first hurdle. Well, they'll be playing finals football this year, no doubt. Will they do it as premiers? Payne, hopeful, into the box and claimed by Vukovic. The noise at the final whistle, if it stays like this, We'll just about lift the roof off. Vukovic launches it long. Jing Reese gets his head on it. Torres to the corner flag. Or not, taking on Sutton. No free kick. Is this the little lifeline? Oh, and Sam Sutton was looking for the raking crossfield ball for Van Hattem, but can't find him.
Reese again battling for everything. Torres has only just picked himself up the turf near the corner flag. Somehow gets the ball straight back again. Strong challenge, Conchi. Look at this, Barbarousas. Hold in the middle. And the flag goes up for offside against Costa Barbarousas. It was close. They'll be dancing in the streets of Gosford this evening. The five minutes of stoppage time are up. One loss in their last 13 for Wellington Phoenix in the league. We talked about Sydney FC's lesson. They taught the Mariners a week ago the message they sent to the rest of the league. Well, the Mariners are answering that this evening. This side has character. This side has backbone. But this side has another couple of minutes to try and hold on. Nisbet almost showed too much of that to Ben Old. Docker. Strong challenge from Sutton, but it'll be a throw for the Mariners. We've had one minute extra already played. It's all over. Angel Torres and Mikel Docker. The South American combination have perhaps just dealt the hammer blow to Wellington Phoenix's Premier's Plate campaign. Because after 24 rounds of matches this season, it's the Central Coast Mariners that sit top of the tree. Wellington Phoenix have three more matches to try and get their hands on the Premier's plate. But on an evening when a draw would have been enough, it's the Central Coast Mariners who found the resources and found the inspiration in the form of their little Brazilian right back, Mikhail Docker, to claim a precious three points at Industry Group Stadium. The champions, the Mariners, at top of the table after defeating Wellington Phoenix by two goals to one. Well, time to breathe, Maka. What a match of football this was. Quality match of football between two excellent sides. Well, a match worthy of a top of the table clash. The Mariners kept coming and coming and pressing and pressing. The Knicks responded when needed. And then a man who was sensational for the whole night, rubber stamped it with a quality finish, deserving of anyone to take the top spot on the league. All right, well, we have our player of the